Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of EOS. It's 1090 Jake, man. I'm rocking with y'all. Y'all rocking with me. And for this video, we're going to be speaking on a man down in Florida that was released early from prison after a brutal murder conviction. And one year after being released, he would strike again, this time killing a woman with a screwdriver in a vicious way. September 24th, 2021, Erica Verdacia left her home. Four days later, her mother would report her missing to the Sunrise Police. She stated Erica was a 33-year-old single mother and her and her six-year-old daughter lived at the home. She expressed to investigators it's out of character for Erica to disappear without any contact at all and it was even more concerning as Erica would never leave her daughter in that manner. A check of her social media accounts revealed no activity since her disappearance. Her mother reached out to her friends who notified her she was stopped by police the day after she left home in the morning. She was with a man named Eric Pearson. October 4th, 10 days since Erica's disappearance, Sunrise detectives made their way to an apartment complex in Davie, Florida, a town in Broward County with a population of just over 100,000 people. This was the first time detectives spoke with Eric and he wasn't in custody. He admitted Erica had been with him after leaving her parents' home and she was in his truck the next day when he was stopped by police. After the traffic stop, Eric stated he drove to a gas station to get fuel. That's when Erica walked away from him, telling him to meet her at Wendy's if she didn't come back, or so he claimed. Eric told detectives he went to the Wendy's, waiting, but she never showed up and he never saw her again. He located the gas station for detectives who were able to collect video surveillance, which revealed a flaw in Eric's story. He went to the gas station, but it was before he was pulled over by police, not after, and he'd already admitted she was in his truck when it happened. Surveillance video from Wendy's was reviewed and Erica was never seen, but neither was Eric's truck. His deceptive story was starting to crack he never waited at Wendy's and she never left his truck. He claimed he didn't know her phone number and only communicated through social media, but phone records would later reveal they spoke on a regular basis up until her disappearance. Sunrise detectives began an investigation into the dark and twisted history of Eric Pearson. He was born in New York, moving to Florida at an early age where he was abused and neglected by his parents. At only 13, he'd be placed in a mental institution and diagnosed with schizophrenia. He was 16 years old when he committed three burglaries in a span of two days back in 1983. Arrested and initially placed in juvenile custody, he was direct filed as an adult and transported to the Broward County Adult Jail. Less than half a year later, he'd be found guilty and sentenced to 18 months as a youth offender in the Florida Department of Corrections. This was Florida's gladiator school, where youths from the ages of 14 to 24 became men through blood, sweat, and prison violence. He'd served less than nine months before being released on community control for the next two years. This was the strictest form of probation Florida had to offer, where if you want to leave your house, not only do you need permission, you have to document the date and time to and from, with one violation holding the possibility of sending you back to prison. Eric violated on his 19th day out. It was 1984, Eric was 18 years old now, and it isn't known what happened to him in prison or what type of effects it had on his mind. But like many that re-offend, they go back to what they know. This time he committed an armed burglary, defined under Florida law as entering a home, business, or structure armed or becoming armed throughout the process. Whether he'd been caught in the act and panicked or had dark intentions before entering, a woman's throat was slit inside of her Davy home. Charged with armed burglary and attempted first degree murder after the woman miraculously survived, he'd be sentenced in 1985 to 18 years in prison. And what comes as a shock is the fact that he'd be released after only four. In 1990, he committed another burglary and was sentenced to five years in prison, but only served two. Now his third time being released from prison, it would be another 15 months before he devastated a community. 
1994, Davie, Florida. It was January 22nd when a female body was found at a construction site. She'd been buried under debris, her body beaten, and her throat showing marks of being strangled. But her face, her head and her face was smashed inside of itself by either a large rock or a concrete cinder block. Whatever she looked like before, she was unrecognizable now as her body was so gruesomely devastated, fingerprints were the only way of identifying her. A mother allowed investigators to take prints from her home to compare to the body, and they matched to a 17-year-old missing daughter, Christina Whitaker. Police were acting on a tip they'd received from a friend of Eric Pearson, the now 27-year-old man who stood six foot eight and weighed well over 200 pounds. He was picked up in Pennsylvania after an officer ran his Florida tag showing his Pontiac was wanted out of Davie, Florida in connection to a homicide. Initially charged with first degree murder and facing death, a plea agreement would spare him as he was convicted of second degree murder and sentenced to 40 years in prison, 15 of which were mandatory. At the time, Florida passed a new law making prisoners serve 85% of their sentence a law that's still in effect to this day and was largely motivated by this slaying. Eric Pearson would be released in September of 2020 after 27 years with good behavior and prison overcrowding to blame. But the Florida Department of Corrections would state he wasn't released early. He was released at the expiration of his sentence in compliance with the laws at the time he was convicted. The same law that was created after a murder he committed didn't even apply to him. September 25th, 2001, a year after Eric's release, he was stopped in the 2004 Ford pickup truck with Erica in the passenger seat. The officers interacted with them both, noticing nothing out of the ordinary. Erica's phone records were obtained by T-Mobile, showing her cell phone pinged the tower of Eric's apartment. Her call log revealed she'd only been in communication with Eric and a man named Terry Page leading up to her disappearance. And Terry would be the last person she'd speak to on the phone. They only spoke for two minutes that day and she'd received more calls and texts, but none of them would go through, meaning her phone was off. Terry Page was interviewed by detectives stating Erica called him on September 25th, asking him to deliver her drugs to an apartment. When he arrived, he saw Erica leaning up against the pickup truck where they made the transaction. His statements were supported by his girlfriend who was with him during the deal, and detectives would confirm Erica had the drugs delivered to Eric Pearson's apartment. October 15th, 21 days after Erica's disappearance, Sunrise detectives spoke with Eric Pearson a second time after he drove to the police station. He was unable to explain the inconsistencies in his initial statement and was told he was free to leave several times, signing a consent to search his truck before he did. A blood test was performed within the vehicle, testing positive and indicating blood in the rear passenger compartment. Later that same night, Eric's girlfriend, Sherry McLeod, contacted Sunrise Police stating Eric made comments to her after speaking with detectives, saying if they don't find a body, they don't have a case. She continued telling police she observed him behaving out of the ordinary over the past few weeks. He'd spent extended periods of time outside of her mobile home in Davie, staring at the canal. And at one point, while outside of the trailer, he said to her, damn that bitch stinks. She also told police the rear truck mats were missing in his truck, and she noticed rocks and debris piling up in the canal. October 16th, 2021, detectives responded to Sherry's mobile home and a dive team found human remains in the canal behind her residence. The remains were transported to the medical examiner's office and based on the jewelry, tattoos, and clothing, the body was identified as 33-year-old Erica. Detectives called Eric asking if he'd come in and speak with them again. Eric told them to call him back at 6 p.m. Doing so, Eric told detectives to meet him at the park in Davie, to which they did, and it was there that Eric agreed to voluntarily go to the police department and explain what happened to Erica that night. He was driven in an unmarked vehicle, and he wasn't handcuffed. 
He was then brought into an interview room, still unhandcuffed, and advised he was not under arrest and free to leave at any time. That's when Eric said he threw a person's cell phone. He didn't admit to harming her, and he asked if he was still free to go. Eric got up and as he was walking out, the deputy chief asked to speak with them for a few minutes, to which Eric replied, let's take this outside. The chief deputy using an audio recording device was able to tape his confession. Eric claimed him and Erica were having sex when his condom fell off. She became enraged and they started fighting. She then went and grabbed a screwdriver while outside of the truck when Eric grabbed her hand. And the six foot eight, 240 pound man forced the screwdriver into her neck twice, then into both of her eyes while she still held on to the screwdriver. He picked her body up, placing her in the back of his truck where traces of blood tested positive. He drove the truck to his girlfriend's house, backing it into the canal and laid a blue top on the ground. He rolled her body in the top, taped it, then rolled her into the water, placing rocks and debris on top of her body to weigh it down. As a result of his confession, 55-year-old Eric Pearson was charged with first-degree murder, punishable by death in the state of Florida, and the chance of him escaping punishment this time are slim to none. What's that? Press your hand again. Yay. So now she'll be with you forever. You're gonna keep pushing it. <laughs> That's forever for you, okay? Can I sleep with her? Of course. Oh my oh, god. Whatever. Now this video here, this is heavy because back in the day, people used to commit murders, attempted murders, and get out extremely fast. A 20 year sentence back then, you're out in like eight years. It wasn't the same the way it is now. And now with Florida's 85% law that you have to do 85% of your time, it's the strictest in the country. That's the same as the feds and I'm sure there's some other states. There's no higher percentage than that. And if there was, it's damn near doing all of your time mandatory. Now, do I think that he should have been released? I'm not the judge. At the end of the day, the fact that they're taking into consideration his good behavior in prison, that doesn't mean shit. Some of the most well-behaved inmates in prison are sex offenders, rapists, the people that prey on women and children. They don't get in trouble in prison. It's the gang members that do, but the fact that they're looked at as well-behaved inmates and then released back into society, it's crazy. That's how you find situations like these, where a six foot eight man is able to skate through prison and nothing happens, but he comes out and finds a five foot six woman. It sounded like she was trying to defend herself, went and grabbed a screwdriver, and he grabbed it while it was in her hand, turned her wrist around, and forced it into her neck and into her fucking eyes. This is some Michael Myers shit. This is some Halloween movie horror shit. I don't know what to say. But in 2021, convictions are a whole lot fucking different. It might take a year to two years for him to actually be convicted. It's still possible that he's going to cop out to a plea to avoid a death sentence and get hit with a life sentence in the state of Florida. He's 55 years old. Even if he got death, it probably wouldn't happen for the next 15 to 20 years. As far as an execution goes, it doesn't really fucking matter. The only thing that mattered was keeping him out of society and away from women. Now I'm going to have Erica's GoFundMe in the comments section. And I'm not going to lie, the video of her daughter listening to the bear with her voice that fucked me up. That's sad as hell. It sounded like she had some substance abuse issues. This guy took advantage of that. He was obviously cheating on his girlfriend, went and found an addict that he could have sex with. And we're not going to believe his story. We're going to disregard his story completely. There's a possibility he was trying to rape her. There's a possibility she was trying to get away and defend herself. He made it seem like she went and got a screwdriver and he, you know, self-defense I ended up stabbing her with it and I got scared and I hid the body. I got rid of it. 
I don't think that's gonna work out in 2021. It's a different fucking generation. And I wish we had California politics because he'd most likely go to jail and get killed his damn self. But hey, it's 1090 Jake. I'm rocking with Charlie. Y'all rocking with me. Till next time.